Well, something that we hear time and time again, our kids are the future, yeah. but when our children's futures are cut short, who ultimately takes that accountability? Our four investigates team spent weeks digging into a case that started with one instance of child abuse, and then it grew to include years of accusations of neglect, domestic violence, and drug possession. Julie Frindak takes us through every turn and the questions about accountability appearing to be ignored at every single one. A 13 year story. He was running around, he had a black t shirt, just a diaper, barefoot. They didn't even know he was gone. Two apartments, two kids. Police department. Can you wake up and talk to us? One mother with a criminal history 20 years long. First time. She got grace. At its heart, questions about how New Mexico looks out for its most vulnerable and whether the agencies in charge of child safety pay attention to red flags, if they raise them at all. The building has a new paint job, but it's impossible to hide its past. On September 21st, 2010, Albuquerque police found a one-year-old girl drowned in a dirty bathtub inside what investigators describe as an extremely filthy apartment. The bathtub was full of trash, a screwdriver, and a razor. The girl's parents told investigators the father, Daniel Reynolds, left her and her two-year-old brother in the bathroom for one minute to get a towel. Police filed child abuse charges against Reynolds and the mother, Natalie Size, who was also home. But prosecutors could never prove criminal intent. Multiple reports say police notified the Children, Youth and Families Department. For five years, Natalie Size racked up charges for breaking and entering, drug possession, criminal trespass. She also had another son. I was at the office and then I went in there and I put my phone down, came back, seen this little baby playing right in front of the Coke machine. An employee at an Albuquerque motel found a three-year-old boy wandering the parking lot. You gotta stay in here, okay? Alone at 4 a.m. Officers connect him to Natalie Size. You have a son? Huh? Where is he? Where's he from? Not here, right? She tells officers she left the door open for her husband and couldn't remember what her son was wearing. Police never filed criminal charges, but a report from seven days later says that boy went into state custody pending further investigation by CYFD. More arrests, more drug charges, then another son for Natalie Size. We're here to do a welfare check on the little ones. We got a call that. A uh, little guy was out in the road. A neighbor reported Size's three-year-old son running in the road. Was there any reason why he'd be out there by himself? No, because usually there's somebody out here with him. To officers, the boy looked happy, healthy, and uninjured. Again, no child neglect charges. Can I get some knuckles, dude? My man. That same year, CYFD reportedly investigated drug use in the apartment where Size was staying. Her same son is with her, happily chatting with officers. Again, no criminal charges. Hello, police department. In October of 2023, things change. We're going to have to check on the kid one way or another, bro, so you can make this harder or you can make it easy, dude. Officers see the boy this time as unhappy, unhealthy, and badly injured. Like I said, he's crazy, he jumps. The officers act quickly. Hey, wait, 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 freeze, don't start. No, you're taking my son, dude. Size has been in jail since that night. Charged with child abuse and bribing a witness. In the 13 years between the death of her daughter and the alleged abuse of her son, CYFD had contact with Natalie Size four times that we know of. So how did a mother with that history ever even get the chance to abuse her son? But when you have multiple issues along the way, it's our job to say, okay, she's flagged as a risk. Senator David Gallegos has a daughter who works in the field for CYFD. He's sponsored at least a dozen pieces of legislation related to children or CYFD since 2021. All the time, we're gonna have mistakes, but the bad thing about CYFD, we never hear about their successes. 
only their failures. So I've been telling them for years, I need a window. I don't need a door in a CYFD. I need a window. We asked CYFD Secretary Teresa Casados during an interview in late March about how the department tracks families who have multiple CYFD reports or parents like Natalie Size. It's a system called FACTS. It is a very antiquated system. We're in the process and money was allocated by the legislative body, which we're really pleased to be um, working towards solving and implementing a new system. We went back to CYFD last week with pointed questions related to Natalie's size, including whether there's a protocol in place to follow up with parents who have had several open cases in a matter of years. They said every investigation is circumstantial and CYFD offers services based on the family's needs at the time. While investigators do have access to all previous CYFD reports, they don't necessarily necessarily know about a criminal history. Law enforcement, CYFD says, chooses what criminal information to release. How do we do better for kids connected to parents who have shown multiple times that they cannot properly care for their children? And try to do this, because I did follow that one. Try to do this without tears. So the problem is we want reunification of the family member. All of us make mistakes. First time, you think about that, the drowning of the daughter. First time, she got grace. He questions whether Natalie Size deserved the same grace in the following years. We want people when they can to go back home to a strong home, but if that's not there, we can't do it just for the fact of giving them back to the parent. Natalie Size and CYFD share troubled histories. Gallego says lawmakers can't turn away from either of them. Anything we can do to help them, to give them direction and give them support, I'm there with them. Julie Frendak for Investigates.